Ziring ziring. Ziring ziring. Ziring ziring. Bie lombe, bie non so dialo ye. Ah, bie lomba ye, bie non so dialo ye. My name is Tan Sayli. It's pronounced Ten Sayli. I was born in a refugee camp in Sumpanat, Thailand. I am of the Iumian community, and I'm helping preserve the Iumian language with the Akuma Project. The Akuma Project is preserving dying languages among indigenous group of people. To me, they're highlighting and kind of promoting. That it's important to save dying languages within these small, marginalized communities. My role has been a lot around community outreach, learning about communities, making connections with people who are doing language work, create spaces to celebrate the many thousands of languages that are spoken and not necessarily written around the world. The Akuma Project it signifies a lot of hope and a lot of empowerment. It was so uplifting to be asked, "What is your language, and can you speak it, and can you tell us more about it, and can we hear you speak it?" Pada sama dahulu, pada satu tengah hari, seorang ibu tunggal. Bisa dulu, bisa dulu. Another initiative is to develop mobile apps for recording and translating oral culture to create large collections of translated language material for future scholarship, for people who want to learn to speak their language, and for documenting the richness that's come down to us through those 7,000 languages. The Aikuma app lets you record in any language and translate phrase by phrase into any other language. And it's a helpful tool, but it's not the only thing. I would say another technology we use is public events. It was very sweet and in-depth how warm and friendly different cultures were, and I really yearn to grasp that kind of experience from every individual, and every individual has such richness. I thought it was really beautiful to listen to one another's perspective. I think the objective was to promote, to highlight, and to uplift and say there are other communities similar to yours, really allowing a space for communities to come together to talk about struggles, to talk about the richness of oral history. That aspect of the Kuma project, it's just amazing. It's a grassroots research-based project. It's not working with numbers. You're working with people. You're letting them know that their language is of value. We can't say that the Aikuma Project is saving languages, but it's about um, maybe if you create a little bit more space for more languages to be spoken and for that to be normal. I think in the U.S. we don't really think it's normal to speak other languages, even though we're full of people who speak other languages. From my own personal experiences, I think the most common discrimination or stereotype against people who who are monolingual, they're seen as less intelligent. Uh, they're seen as less than. The barrier is the language. It's not that these people are not smart. There's bigotry. We have to try to fight against it. You know, and try to be as open as possible, and try to be accepting and be less divisive and you know know that we all live on the same planet we all breathe the same air we all bleed the same blood you know there's always like differences you know little bits of differences but I'd rather focus on hope and and commonality I've always known it was about survival I had to make sure I was bilingual I was the main one who translated things for my parents. Being involved in the Akuma project now, having that be seen as a strength, it's not just about survival, it's about your identity, it's about who you are, it's about your people, it's about your community, it's about your history. It totally changed how I felt about myself as a bilingual speaker. It added new meaning to uh, my ability to speak my native language.
Hindi ko pa tapos ang isang pang-araw. 